Hey, what's up, man? Jordan McCarlson from JMAC Golf Academy. So um, you get me in the uh, very casual late at night version here, but um, just want to shoot you a quick video because I had more to say that was probably going to be harder to say via text and all that sort of stuff. So um, feel free to follow up with a question or whatever. But um, some really good stuff in your golf swing. Um, some stuff that is very um, kind of specific to your swing. I talked briefly just about how the elements in your swing match up together, which is why obviously you're a pretty good stick, seven handicap. Um, and you know, you know, some elements of it are a little not super unusual. You know, you look a little bit like John Rahm maybe, um, is probably a guy who I would compare what your move is um, similarly to. You know, the things that trouble me a little bit about your move, and I would guess um, the things that probably go wrong when it starts to get off rhythm are, um, obviously your, your move begins in a way that really rolls the club in behind you hard with this forearm. And that's probably something that if you were to come to me for a package of lessons that I would work on with you. Um, Cause it's not necessary to get that club to the top, um, but it does create a, a lot of kind of instability um, in the club, particularly, I bet you struggle on like smaller half shots. I wonder if your half wedges are maybe not the best part of your game. Um, people who have a pretty severe rolling action, then sometimes struggle to get it back to square um, on shorter or half shots. So um, that's something that might want to improve. So, and, and really, as I said, it really happens by you rolling and turning the club back this way. Now, by the time you get it all the way to the top, you kind of reroute it into this move, right? Where um, you got your left wrist, lead wrist nice and flat. The club is a little short and laid off. Uh, but you got the face really nice under control, which means that when you start down aggressively, you get the club, you know, path a little bit um, left or, you know, slightly, you know, some people would describe it as, you know, over the top or out to in, but not a lot, right? And you got the face like pretty, very slightly open and in a pretty good position here to where you can kind of wham down on that ball pretty well. And um, I bet you're a pretty decent ball striker with your shorter irons and stuff like that. I bet you had, you know, a pretty consistent little pull cut um, is the shot that that would most likely match up with. So. I think a lot of that stuff, you know, a pretty good formula for being a pretty consistent, um, you know, single digit handicap player. Um, yeah, so if I were you, things I might look at are maybe working a little bit on this takeaway, just trying to get this simplified a little bit. Don't allow your forearms to roll that club in this way. You can still get it to here and then get it to the top in a relatively similar position, but with less manipulation to kind of get it into that spot. And I would bet um, for many players that have a ton of early forearm rotation when you get it to the top, they're more likely then to re-roll those forearms going out this way. And I would suspect that in your transition, um, it's probably the thing that will cause you the most trouble. So when you um, get in a bad way, maybe either frustrated or um, maybe just off rhythm, right? That you'll then kind of re-roll your forearm this way, get the club more stood up than you want, and I bet you either hit it chunky is probably a common miss or um, or maybe you know that you're going to hit it chunky and then you stand up through it a little bit so you'll hit some thin ones kind of in response to that. So I would just maybe start paying some attention to the movement of your particular lead forearm, though obviously your right's connected kind of in that way to it, how it's kind of rolling that club back this way. And then from the top, how am I starting that transition? What happens when I begin that transition? Do I feel my arm my forearm starting to roll this way. Do I feel any pressure in my hands, pressuring the handle, getting the club outward? Like I said, I'm not trying to say you're like way over the top or anything like that, but I bet in your bad ones, that's most likely what's gonna occur. And if you pressurize the handle, particularly in this sort of area, it oftentimes will open the face a little bit. On that driver swing that you sent me, the face was in a pretty good neutral spot, very slightly open, pretty well set up for a fade kind of bias. Um, but I bet on your bad ones, which I don't think that one was, I thought it was a pretty good swing probably, um, on your bad ones, I can imagine if you pull it out a little bit further, that face would get even a little bit more open and your little, little baby pull fade probably turns into a little bit more of a peely fade. So, um, and, or you can shut it down, as you mentioned, really wham it down in the ground, keep that face shut and like lower the loft and hit like low pulls. So I would just try and kind of smooth and even out this forearm rolling early, keep it nice and simple here, get to the top still, and then try and reduce the amount of forearm roll that I have early. You might use a little bit late to kind of still help close the face, um, which is totally fine, but uh, doing it earlier in transition really kicks that hand path out and you get the club moving over this way. So uh, those are the things that stand out to me. Honestly, I think it's a pretty good golf swing. It's um, like you said, a little bit kind of unique and homemade, but you know, John Rahm's doing something pretty similar, just with a little bit simplified uh, backswing and stuff. So I think lots of good elements there. So anyway, hopefully that's interesting or helpful to you, man. Um, good luck, brother.